Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well we've been creating some scroll effects with a Divi theme. In the last video we created these little blurb modules that sort of spin in and appear. If you look at the image down below we've got a parallax image today. When it gets about halfway up the page it's got a call to action module with button that's going to fade in like that gets to about 70% it's in fully then when we scroll up a little bit more it's gonna fade out so we've got this parallax effect with fade in call to action module really easy to do there's no coding involved with this today we're just using the onboard features of the fantastic Divi theme itself so let's get started first thing I'm gonna do is enable the visual build once enabled, let's go down to where we want to work. And I'll simply delete this section here. And let's start and add a new section. We'll start from scratch. We hit the little blue button for a new section. I'm going to use a regular section. Inside, I'm going to use a column, single column, with a single row there. I'm going to go down and use a call to action module right there. Divi comes as standard with all these modules. Plenty enough to build just about any site. If you've got WooCommerce installed, you get an extra dozen of these modules as well to display your products. Okay, let's pop the call to action in. You can use any module you want for this, obviously. Or you can put multiple modules in the row if you want to. Okay, I'm going to leave it just as it is. Obviously put whatever you want to say for your title there what you want your button to say just down below here can't see it at the moment because we've not got a link and your button won't show up until we put a link in there and obviously put your content in down below here and like any text area you can add media justify it add links bold it italicize it whatever you need to do like I say I'm gonna leave mine just as it is there okay well let's go down to link just below on the content tab and here's the button link URL at the top. As soon as I put that in, the button's going to appear. Now I've just got the sort of default looking button in there. I'm going to leave that exactly like it is. You can style it however you want in the design tab. Module link URL. If you want the whole module to link to somewhere and the button to link to somewhere else, put in the link here. And usual things apply with the module link target. If you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off-site to a different website, open it in a new tab so your site stays open for best practice. Okay, the call to action module by default comes with a background. I'll leave that there for a moment. I'm going to take that away, or at least change it out when we've got our parallax background in. So let's just leave this module as it is for the moment. And we'll go and put our image in the background of our section and make it parallax. So I'm going into the section, little blue cog, straight down to the background. And I'm going to choose an image. You've got color, gradient, image, or video. I'm going to choose the image. Go down and grab whatever image it is you want. And there it is in the background there. And if we look down, there's a little switch under the image right there. It says use parallax effect. I'm going to flip that on. Now we've got two flavors to choose from. We've got true, true parallax there. If I roll the page up and down, I don't know if you'll be able to see very well, but it's moving. And this really is what I know as parallax because the background is moving, but it's moving at a different rate to the foreground. Now the other one that we've got here is CSS parallax or what is really known as fixed position background. That background image is going to stay where it is right now. And that's very dramatic. So just for drama, I'll leave it on that one today. Obviously, choose whatever works best for you. Great. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back into my module now. And I'm going to take away the background. So I'm in the module. Content tab. Down to background. Now I'm just going to take mine away by hitting the trash can. Because my writing stands out well against that image 
But you may have an image that's busier than this and that perhaps your, your writing may get lost in parts of it, especially if it's multicolored. If that's the case, put a background color back in there or leave a background color in there. And you can click on the color, bring the opacity down. So you can still read the writing, but you can actually see some of the image behind. That's a little solution if your image is busy and your text gets lost in there. But mine works fine, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay. All right, well, let's set our scroll effect now. What I actually wanna do, when, when it's down the bottom here, I don't wanna see it at all. When it's a fade in, when it gets to about here, be fully visible about sort of 70 75 percent up here then when it gets higher about 80 percent 90 percent i want it to fade back out again so to do that we need to go over to our scroll effects if we go over to the advanced tab at the bottom you're going to find scroll effects we're simply going to use the fade in and out for this today which is this third little tab right here left click on it hit the little button that says enable fading in and out and we've got a viewport top and bottom and some settings we can set. A viewport is basically the viewable area of whatever screen it's being seen on. Okay, so down the bottom, I don't want to see anything there. So it's starting at zero opacity, which is invisible, but I want it to be more invisible till it gets higher. So I'm going to put this up to maybe, I don't know, fairly high, 30, 40%. As you can see, it's not even coming into there. It's fully visible about there. Still a little quick, but I don't want it to be 100% visible there. At the moment, we're at the 50% or halfway up the screen. We're at 100% visibility. I'm going to take that up to maybe 75%, maybe even 80%. Let's try 75%. That way, we don't see it. We just see the parallax image starts to fade in there. And it's fully in right about there. Then after it's up here fully, about there, a little about there, once they slide up further than that, I want it to fade out again. So I'm going to take the viewport top, top of the viewport here, down to perhaps 90% or even 85%. Play with it, get what works for you. I'm going to put that back to zero. I'm simply going to type a zero in there. It'll put in the percent for you. As you can see, it's disappeared. We're back in there. So we're going to start off invisible. Scrolling up the page starts to come in about there. Fully visible about there. And it's going to start to go back out again at the top there. Maybe I'm going to take that down to 70. And let's try that now. There we go, so it's fading in. It's now fully visible right there. And when we go up higher, it's gonna fade out again. There we go. So let's save our changes and check this out on the front end. Save the page changes. And exit the Visual Builder. And roll on down. There's our little parallax section as I go down. There's our call to action fading in. It's fully visible right there. They can click on it, do what they want. As we disappear up the page, it's going to fade out again, left with a parallax image. And that's going to get people's attention as that pops in like that, which is exactly what you want. It's going to get their eyeballs on it. Really easy effect to do. As you can see, no coding involved. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.